I like this so I do it and I don't like this so I leave it out. No, the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for us to be deserving of the love of Allah, must be completely comprehensive, a common life. Live, live according to it. We can't be selective. Choose this from the Sunnah and leave this out from the Sunnah. That's not adhering to the Sunnah. That's adhering to this other. <coughs> Another matter. And they're all achievable. Because Allah Azza wa Jal will not enjoin or legislate something that is not achievable. Because it won't be fair otherwise. Indeed, Allah loves the pious. And the Prophet said, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, In Allah loves a person who is pious, self contented, and free from need. For or of needs of all needs for people and prepares to be unnoticed. He doesn't like to be under spotlight. He tries to stay as far as possible from show up. Taqwa is achieved by placing a barrier between you and the wrath and punishment of Allah. And this is achieved by fulfilling the commands of Allah Azza wa Jalla and refraining from everything He prohibited. Subhanahu. Another quality is frequent repentance. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawbahi. Allah loves those who frequently repent. You see, humankind are prone to evil. Add to that the plots and whispers of Shaitan. In addition to the inclination, natural inclination to fulfilling desires, these factors add up and weaken the soul, weaken the heart, weaken the slave, which make him sin. Up until here, this is normal because this is the nature of mankind. His iman fluctuates and that's when he sins, when it weakens. But people differ with what comes after that. Repenting for what they have done wrong. Some people don't even bother repenting to Allah altogether. And some do repent but they're also Two types of people in this regard. Some immediately repent and some delay. And some of them delay until it's too late and death strikes them before they know it. See, it's normal to sin. Not okay, but normal because this is the nature of mankind. The Prophet said, Kullu ibn Adam. All mankind are fallible, they make mistakes. So this is expected. <coughs> but people differ with what comes after that. Repenting to Allah. And notice this, the verses continuously repent because we always make mistakes. It's not a single mistake which we repent from and that's it. See, we make mistakes round the clock. And that's why we need to repent from Allah. See, repentance comes from feeling Allah and glorifying Allah. See, the believer knows that eventually he will die. So he fears to meet with Allah Azza wa Jal while sees upon error and mistake and sin. And he realizes and believes firmly that Allah Azza wa Jal will resurrect people and hold each one of us to account.
and he hears the Father. He glorifies him. So he hastens to repentance. What results from that? Allah rejoices at the repentance of his name. Accepts his repentance. Loves him. And not only that, when that repentance is accepted by Allah, it's, and it is sincere, Allah will change these sins into reward. As he says in the Quran, Illa man taba wa wa hamla hamla salihah. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Except for those who repent, believe and act righteously. Those are the ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal will change their bad deeds into good deeds, into reward. And as Allah has ever forgiven That's the difference between people, and that's the difference in the results and the outcome. Ihsan is yet another quality. Wallahu al-Hibbul Qasim. See, Ihsan is a very broad term that has many different meanings depending on the context. <laughs> but some of its meanings is kindness, perfecting the deeds, And when it's with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal, it is to perform the act of worship or deed in the most perfect manner, sincerely for His sake. Performing it whilst feeling that Allah Azza wa Jal is seeing you, is right there seeing you. And you can see Him watching you. This is the feeling one need to have. One must have when he is performing a deed. Allah is watching. So I need to be as perfect as I can. To Allah belongs the best and most exalted example when one is at his job and he's told that the GM is going to make a, a round in the company and he's called, going to see how each person performs and he suddenly walks into the room where you're working you think you don't need to answer aloud how perfect will you be in performance, in your appearance, in the way you present yourself and represent yourself. Totally different when you know that he's one. He's not one to be made in the world, or nobody is one to him. And to Allah the ones most exalted examples. We know that Allah is a genuine. Is watching you. Yet you don't take this into consideration when you perform your deeds. With regards to, this is with regards to the Creator, with regards to the creation. When it starts with oneself, by protecting oneself from punishment, how? By fulfilling servitude to the Lord, to the Creator's account. With others, with kinship, with relatives, with wives and children, maintaining ties, being fair for those who marry, who are married to more than one, one wife, being fair between the children and not favoring one over others. With other people, being kind and benevolent to them, helping them out in times of hardship, fulfilling their needs. Ihsan is even enjoined upon us towards animals. In the book of al Imam Muslim, the Prophet said, In Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has enjoined ihsan to everything. And then he gave an example so that people will not only think of humans. فَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الدَّبْحِ So when you slaughter, do it with kindness 
and perfection. How is this? When you're about to slaughter, he said to the wife, said them, they make sure your knife is sharp so the animal does not suffer. Don't you see that the prostitute who gave that dog a drink of water using her shoe was admitted into gender because of her kindness, of her exam to this thirsty dog. One thing that must be enjoyed, must be spread as a spirit and a feeling amongst Muslims. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet said, a man went to visit another man in a different village. And as he was walking, Allah sent an angel to him on his path and said, Where are you going? He said, I am going to visit so and so. He said, Do you have any worldly need from him? Do you have anything pertaining to this dunya that you want from him? You expect from him? He said, No, no, no. I am only going there because I love him for the sake of Allah. He said, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Conveying to you that Allah loves you for your love. For your love. An important question to ask ourselves for us. How many people are there out there whom we love purely for the sake of Allah? Nothing else but Allah. No need for me. It's an important question to ask. And if there is none, or very few, then we need to work harder on this, because it will make us deserving of the love of Allah. So, patience. Allah loves the patient. The patient ones. In a lot of this. Abdul Rahim ibn Yazid. And this story is related to only one type of patience. See, patience, as the scholar said, it's to be patient when fulfilling a command, being patient when refraining from the sin. And being patient when afflicted with something that's harmful and painful and appears evil from the views of Allah. Well, this story is pertaining to that last time. Abdul Wahid ibn Zayd said, One day I left my house going to the other side of town, and on the way I came across a black man who was suffering from leprosy, crippled, and blind. And children were throwing rocks at him until he fled. He said, I noticed from distance that he is moving his lips, mumbling something, that, which I couldn't hear. He said, so I came close to him and heard him say, follow me. Oh, my master. If you would cause, if you would cause my body to be cut up with clippers and my bones to be cut using the saw, that will only make you love, make me love you more. So do to me as you desire. I will continue to love you. That is the means of patience. When one is afflicted and loved by 
Allah Azza wa Jalla. So we need to be content when we are struck with an adversity or a hardship or a calamity. We need to remember that this patience and perseverance will result in much goodness in this life and the year after. Allah Azza wa Jalla will fill our hearts with pleasure and challenge us with rewards in the year after. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم استغفروا لي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Brothers, please come forward and close Many brothers are outside standing at the door here Many of the speakers here, please come forward brothers Allah loves those who purify themselves. Now, purification here is of two types. Tangible and a non-tangible type. Tangible meaning to purify oneself and put oneself in clothes from tangible impurities by uh, performing ritual that, like also the horrible group and so on. And the spiritual one is by cleansing the heart from diseases like spite, envy, arrogance, pride, purifying oneself from sin and all other types of diseases of the heart. Allah loves those who rely on Him. Those who rely on Him in all their affairs. They resort to Him in all their affairs. They utilize the legislative means, worldly means, but their hearts rely on Him. They utilize the means because we are instructed to utilize means. But we're also commanded not to rely on them, but to rely on the one who can make them effective. There is no contradiction between utilizing means and full reliance on Allah. The Prophet was asked by a man who came to the masjid and had his camel outside. He said, I left my sheep camel outside. Should I buy her or, so she doesn't run away, or rely on Allah, meaning leave her loose, and rely on Allah that He will protect her and keep her living. He said, don't tie her and then rely on Allah. Tie her by utilizing the need. This is utilizing the need. And then put, put your trust, put trust in Allah, that He is the one who is going to make this tying effective. Because it can be ineffective if you trust and reliance on one thing. Good manners and what equality to have. The Prophet was asked, and this is reported by a Quran classified as authentic by a Quran. He was asked by a group of people who approached him. He, they, they said, Who are the most beloved of the slaves of Allah to Allah? Those who Allah loves the most, He said, the ones who are best in manners. Ahasimu Akhlaq. And I will conclude with a quality that is reported by the Qadi. And it is a Qudsi narration. Allah Azza wa Jal says, ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي من نوافذ حتى أكله. My slave will continue to draw closer to me by virtue of performing optional deeds until I die. So, performing optional deeds 
more and more and more result in the love of Allah to this day. You see the issue as it goes by Rahmatullah said. He said the issue, the challenge is not that you love Allah. We all claim this. Let's say shahnu fi an tuhibba Allah. Walakinna shahna an yuhibbak Allah. Deny the challenge. The real essence of the issue is that Allah loves you. But what results from this love? Okay, we know that we, if we do this and this and this and that, Allah loves us. What results from this love? And this is very direction. Allah continues to say, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ And when I love Him, what happens? Brothers, sisters, please listen to me. I become His hearing with which He hears and his sight with which he sees, and his hand with which he strikes, and his foot which, with, with which he walks. <clears throat> In other words, you only hear things that, that Allah has given us. You only look at things that Allah has given us. You only do things with your hands that Allah has given us. And you only walk towards places that Allah has given us. And then, that's not the end of it. وَلَيْسَ أَلَا لِي لَوْا اَعْتِيَنَّا If he asks of me, if he supplicates me, I will give him. وَلَيْسَ أَلَا لِي لَوْا اِيَنَّا And if he seeks my protection and refuge, I will surely protect him. Success and joy in this life and the year after is when Allah Azza wa Jal loves you. He will support you. He will protect you. He will enable you to do more and more of good deeds. He will make you firm on faith. He will grant you good end. He will enable you to utter shahada at the time of death. He will give you your book with your right hand. He will put you under his shade in the, in the day of judgment, on the day of judgment. He will protect you from the fear of the grave, the fear of that great horrible day. He will admit you into Jannah and protect you from the fire of hell. Are these things worth it? Indeed they are. We ask you to turn to to make us discern from you. Of his work. Allah 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 Allah